and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Kalia and friends. That's going to start off our stream today. We're playing a few different decks in ranked. As you can tell, we got Hawkeye joining us here at the beginning of the stream saying hi to everybody. Um, but yeah, let's, so this is this is a deck that, that I've played plenty of times before that that's just one of my favorite decks, you know, kind of going back to to uh, old favorites of mine between the Kalia and Friends and the Golgari Stompy, so two decks that I wanted to play again that I haven't played in a few weeks. This is just, you know, like Mardu Midrange focused on Kalia Zenith Seeker. I didn't really know like what, what to call it because I didn't really want to call this deck Mardu Midrange, of course, and so I ended up calling it Kalia and Friends because Kalia has a bunch of friends here in the deck. Because whenever she enters the library, uh, or sorry, enters the battlefield, she gets to reveal the top six cards of the library. There we go. And she has the ability to reveal an angel, a demon, and or a dragon card from among them to put into our hand. And the rest go to the bottom of our library. So we want to play angels, demons, and dragons. And that's what we got here. We've moved up you know, since the last time we played it. Um, well, the last time we played we did move up to the two embodiment of agonies. And I, I still like having the two of those. I've just been... Uh, continually impressed with this card, specifically the Death Touch. So even when you play it as like a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2, two, two, and it's just a small creature, it still is a flying Death Touch creature, which is basically like a Mortify. You know, like it's going to just trade in combat with whatever you want, like as far as its blocking abilities. And 3 mana is a really good mana cost with Soren, with that minus X being able to return a 3-drop and still stay around. So it's good having... Uh, more three drops there. But yeah, let's go ahead and get get to the games. Let's let's see how this does. We'll play like four or five matches with each one of our decks today, and then we're gonna have um, just a Just Guy Hero donation deck for later on. All right, Kali and friends. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, I just saw the new red enchantment. That looks real. It looks really interesting. Um, for the, from the new set. Let me see. Oh, what's the name of it? I guess Fires of Invention. Yeah, that looks really cool. Um, I'm gonna be keeping this hand. But I think my graphics, yeah, like my graphics look really sharp on my end. The reason why, I mean, I wish I could play in the 1440, but I have to move it down to 1080 because it's, for y'all, you're just seeing in 1080 either way. But uh, I have noticed that my computer lags more if I keep it in 1440. It's just harder on the computer while doing like the recording and the streaming and everything like that yeah so fires of inventions you can only cast spells during your turn and you cannot cast more than two spells each turn but then you may cast spells with cmc less than or equal to the amount of lands you control without paying their mana cost so you basically get to double up your mana but you can only play two things a turn Hey, Ralph Guru. That's the first Eldrin card that, that you've seen that got a reaction out of you? Well, for good reason, it is, it is a good one. I think I want to just go with Resplendent Angel again. Have double Resplendent Angel in play, so if I drop Sora next turn, we'll gain six life. No! The Ferocidon. No, my plans. Oh, I had so many plans. But now I can't gain life. Yeah, plans are canceled. Be 
Yeah, I like Fires of Invention. It makes cards like... Fires of Invention makes cards like Drawn from Dreams even better. Uh, you know, like, card, like kind of expen more expensive card draw spells because you get to just play it for free. And... I don't even know if I should be doing this, the paying life. I probably shouldn't be. I mean, I guess I just have haste. I don't know. Yeah, I just have haste here. Sorry, I was thinking about the Fires of Invention card. I didn't really realize that my opponent was dead. I know, Ferocidon is a menace. <laughs> What a menace. Hmm. So I guess they're just gruel dinosaurs? Question mark? Could be like gruel midrange that just happened to have two dinosaurs. Either way... Like, basically, I'm not sure if I want Legion's End or Deafening Clarion or Dispark. You know, like, I, I'm not sure what numbers of Legion's End, Dis, Dispark, and Clarion that I want to play. You know, if I want, like, all the Clarions, one a Clarion, you know, both Disparks, no Disparks, that kind of stuff. I mean, like, Noxious Grasp is pretty obvious. Devout Decree is another one. You know, it's like... I think, I think we play Devout Decree. All right, so we're going to play Devout Decree. I think I'm gonna load up onto Sparks also. I think we can get rid of Legion's Ends. Maybe I just don't play Tithe Taker and just play all the removal possible. I had worse ideas than that. By all the removal possible, I mean not that Clarion, but the rest of the stuff. Because, you know, Clarion does, of course, kill my Resplendent Angels and Kalia's also. <laughs> so an angel, a demon, and a dragon walk into a bar. Then they, they realized they walked in too late and it was last call, Leah. Hmm. We got one of those. We need more real estate, though. I think we're going to go ahead and just go with the, the two life. I want to just spend this turn, turn cast downing, and then lead straight into Kalia. So that worked out pretty well. Huh. Well, we could choose land, 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 or Clarion. You know what? I'm not going to choose any of them. Hey, Clockwork John. Here for six months, stay in for many more. Oh, well, thank you so much. Looks there, clockwork, John. All right, second sub of the day. I mean, Kalia heard me whenever I said I need more real estate. So we know we have a Kalia, a Sorin, a Clarion, and five lands down at the bottom of our library. Mike Lamb! My cat loves your stream. He sits and watches whenever I do. I don't think they know what Embodiment of Agonies does. 
Thank you so much there for the support. Happy to have your chat hanging out here with us. Feast, your blood is mine. So if we grab embodiment, embodiment does see itself in the graveyard, so it would be a 3-3. Three, three. Um, let's just grab the Kalia, though, and try to draw another card. All right. We got our first angel, demon, or dragon. Oh, no. We actually ha we already had one demon because we had the embodiment. All right. Third sub of the day. Vivian. Wild animals I like. That card's rude. People, this is not I always survive. You'll see. Hmm. I wish I didn't have to use a noxious grasp already on Vivian. Like, wish Vivian minus down to one. Not bad. For a mouse. Because it went down to one, we'd be able to tick up Soren to finish the job. Stop. Hmm. So it'd be one, two, three, four. So embodiment would be a four, four. I get back embodiment. Worst possible scenario is another Domri's ambush that just like kills the Hellkite and then also attacks Orin for five. If I tick up Soren. I think I'm supposed to minus. Actually, let's just get the Kalia back and get more creatures. All right, we hit two. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Just getting the card advantage. Kind of the problem with getting the Kalia, though, is it does, does kind of mess up my ability to Clarion. Kind of. Land's a good draw. I really want one more land. I think I just take seven. Oh, right. Kalia has Vigilance. Definitely forgot about that part of Kalia, the Vigilance part. And having big flying creatures is pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've played this Kalia three times. We played it. They killed it. We got it back with Soren. They killed it again. We got it back with Soren again. So, yeah, Soren is pretty good. That Soren was worth two Kalias, and the two Kalias got two angels and a demon. So that one Soren put out two, put out two three threes. Also dealt one damage, and gained one life, and put in play two three threes that drew three other cards. All right, Vanderlark. Take care. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Sure. Turn three Clarion is pretty good against a lot of decks. Ooh. I mean, I'm keeping the card. It's really good, but it kind of messes with my Clarion plan. I 
<laughs> the feel zone, you are the dino deck because your creatures are bigger. I know, right? It did seem like we were the dino deck there. Mono red. We're going to be playing mono red later. to be a pretty good Clarion. If I would have waited a turn, looks like we would have got even more creatures with the Clarion, though. Hey, Jaguar. Jaguar getting in on the hype action. Sub number four on the day. Yeah, the, the thing about playing the Angel is that if I play a Resplendent Angel before Clarion, then whenever I do play Clarion, it's going to kill the Resplendent Angel. And I don't I don't want my Clarion to kill my Resplendent Angel. Resplendent Angel is also kind of nice later on because it is... like I like having Shalai protect Resplendent Angel also because it is vulnerable to the three damage burn spells. You know, if I just play Resplendent Angel, they just you know strike it. Um... That's also kind of a feels bad. And then, you know, they would attack me with those other creatures. Hmm. I just want Shalai back in play. Again, to have Sh Shalai protect us one angel. You belong to me now. Make them use more burn spells to take out Shalai, since they can't use burn spells at me now. my life better hey what's up rx jelly been here for two weeks good to be back and be able to catch the stream well glad to have you back thanks so much for that resub how is europe europe for two weeks i have never been to europe and so i am jealous Yeah, and, and where'd you go in Europe? My best, biggest experience with Europe is like whenever I'm playing like some board game and I don't realize it's my turn and the other person's like, hey Todd, you're up. And I'm like, oh, right. So Munich, Salzburg, and Prague. <laughs> you missed the puns while you're gone. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't wasn't the best of jokes. I'm I'm working on I'm still working on the uh the old stand up routine. As you can tell as I'm sitting down. We're not there yet. So, 
Despark is usually pretty good against mono red decks with like Frenzy and Chandra. Like those two cards are difficult to deal with. But I don't know. I guess my, my opponent's probably playing those cards. I don't know. They had like the the lizard. The lizard's usually only played in Cavalcade, but they played a lot of other cards that are not played in Cavalcade. Um, we'll get them in here. All right, Noxious Grass Bow. I need to take out three other cards. Hmm. I kind of like all these cards. Thinking maybe Embodiment. Bedevil. Yeah, we're gonna take out those. And I got. I probably should just cut a five drop. I guess I'll cut a Hellkite. Just cut a five drop. Nice. We dog was saying the same cards. Take out Noctis Grass from the Devil. <laughs> Thanks, Scattered Society. Terrible jokes, the best jokes. <laughs> Rexy played a Safara in this deck. I mean, you can get to seven mana for sure. Hmm. Alright, so I am i don't want to shock. If I play the Temple of Triumph, I have to shock next turn. And I think it's worth it to not shock. So that's my that's my plan. So by going with the Godless Shrine, I was going to be able to play the Isolated Chapel the next turn, and then so I was going to have Tithe Taker, and then I would have had Cast Down the for turn three anyway still, and then I just would have played Temple of Triumph on turn three and just known I would have had to, you know, play the two drop, um, which, you know, is perfectly fine because we didn't have a, a three drop anyway. But it looks like my opponent has had a better time bef before... Not looking good for them. Should be about it. Yep. GGs. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate the keep from our opponent, especially I think they were on six cards, maybe. Beat on seven. It's not like the worst keep. You know, keeping a one drop. Yeah, and look like multiple one drops with, uh, light up the stage. Like that was pretty unlucky for them not hitting another land after light up the stage. But that happens. <laughs> the light-up got denied. Yeah, it turns out that stage wasn't really flammable. And just didn't work. Forgot the matches. Alright, well our deck is 2 and 0. Oh. Very good start. And this is a pretty good curve here of two, three, four, five. And my opponent doesn't even have that many cards. Doesn't even have. I think they just mold to four, I think. Espa. <laughs> there you go. So glad you didn't miss any ar arena dailies still. That's good.
Even though taking the Doom Whisper is just taking another 5 drop. And we already had two other 5 drops. Still took it just because of how powerful it is. Doom Whisper is really good with Soren too. Like where you get to play Soren on turn 4. Tick up. Go to 6. Then play Doom Whisper. And then surveil with Doom Whisper and put like a, a four, you know put like a creature into the graveyard. And then immediately use the Soren to put that creature into play. So it's a nice combination there. All right, going to kind of assume Esper control as far as the Esper deck of choice that my opponent is going with here. Um, so I want Duresses. I actually don't know if I really want the Disparks, to be honest. I know Dispark, Dispark is great. Oh, I don't want Legion's End. I thought there was another one there. Like, Dispark's great against Big Teferi, but not so much against the little Teferis. So we're at 64 here. Um, usually they'll have like good answers between like, you know, just like fried, I know, not fry, sorry, Noxious Grasp, Dispark, all that kind of stuff. They'll have like good answers to like Shalai and Lyra. I don't really like Shalai Lyra too much in this matchup. They're just pretty expensive. I think I'm going to cut, I think I may just cut those four. The, the little bit of problem with cutting those four is it does make Kalia worse. I mean, Shalai can kind of protect some stuff that Aurelia can't. I'm trying to click on... No! Lag! Okay, good. We didn't run out. Is there, the, is there a rope sound bug happening here? I took, may have taken too long during sideboarding. Yeah, I've definitely seen the new cards from Throne. Which one do you think will have the biggest impact on Standard? I think it's Questing Beast by a ways right now. Questing Beast is just unbelievable on rates and everything. Questing Beast is one of like the the best cards I've ever seen previewed. Like you know, like like when you look at the cards and pre like during previews, you don't always really recognize like how good a card is, kind of thing. There's like sometimes like a card like jumps out to you like, wow, that card will be amazing, kind of thing. But not, not always, you know. But then you like, there's a lot of cards that surprise you, like, uh, you know, about field of the like field of the dead, for example. That'd be okay, but didn't think it would be as good as it is and stuff like that but questing beast just looks incredible in every way yeah i'm sure i'll play the brawl commanders in standard yeah i'm sure i'll, I'll sure i'm sure i'll do that i don't know if i should have taken the the Wrath of God instead of the Dispark. That may be a mistake with them having the Hero of Precinct 1. I should just let them have the Wrath. I certainly regret it after drawing the Soren. You know, Soren was like the, the main card that I really didn't want to get Disparked. I probably should have just let them have the Wrath, though. I did not stop this fight. But I will finish it. I require your body, not your soul. Oh, I can wait millennia for revenge. Hey, Marius. Yeah. Boo got home safe today. He left early in the morning. Yeah, I should have just let them have the wrath. Sorry, I'm late. Not so fast. Uh, now what? They just have one card left, though. Yep. 
I can shock and play Resplendent Angel or just play Tithe Taker. Thing is, if I shock and play Resplendent Angel, then their last card's removal for Resplendent Angel. Then I'm, I'm down to nine. Then I'm taking four. I'm down to five, and it's, it's kind of rough. Don's Dodger with the resub. Thank you so much, there, Don's. Welcome back. Uh, fortunately, we know we're not drawing red mana next turn with the Kalia there. Wow. All right. Well, I I had I mean I had the ability to win this probably, but I just messed up my duress. I have to like pay two life to surveil that away, but I can't because then we take lethal. So very very good draws for our opponent. Just every everything was just removal. All right, so they are hero, not just control. So hero, do I want like a Clarion in? So many to Sparks, like Sparks so good against a lot of these things. Now I'll run it back. Yeah, I mean, I I always I've always liked uh, Garouk. So I, I think that's a it's a planeswalker character I've always liked. I'm not sure exactly how good this one is. Um, definitely works really well with Tulsimer. but. To be fair, at first I, I didn't think it was that good, but I also only thought it made one token at first. It took me a few days to realize that it made two tokens. With the zero ability, that's a whole lot better. Yeah, I mean, Garuk's good. Garuk's good. Because the, the two tokens, that, that really is pretty big. Hey, Caesar. I march into battle as your champion of justice. I will lend you my strength. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely be making Nabs and Wolf Tribal for sure. So my plan originally was just going to be to play the Soren and have the Soren um, tick up to do the last point of damage on the Teferi. But drawing Aurelia, if they have like Dispark in hand, I'd rather them Dispark Aurelia than Soren here. Yeah, I'm going to be sad whenever Lyra rotates as well. Ooh. Uh, I can't gain five life and play Resplendent Angel, can I? I'll taste your neck. You taste my I am whole. I need for blood. Share in my light. Oh, 
I like padding. So I'm playing Soren here really to kind of pad my life total, like getting all that life link damage in. With having Command the Dreadhorde, I do want to pad my life total. Mm. I don't want to draw lands, though. Your light will cleave the darkness. There you go. Four color mid range, Bone Crusher Giant, Murderous Rider, Tulsimer, Garrick, Garuk. I like it. I assume this is going to cause a wrath. What a mess I've made. But you have my opponent play, like, my opponent kind of needs Kai's Wrath. Or they're in a whole lot of trouble. And even if they do have Kaya's Wrath, it's still not a bad uh, spot for us to be in. Wow. Did not take Command the Dread Horde. That is surprising. So they did not have Kai's Wrath. I believe in you. So we'll just give everything vigilance. Besides the Gideon, of course. But they have to just double chump to stay alive. Is a so Seraph is just fine to play because even if they do have a wrath, Seraph makes a couple of tokens. They don't, they just don't really have anything to do there. All right, there we go. Three and O for Kalia and friends. Rank up. Good start to this Let's Saturday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, that game was as close as the Ravens versus the Dolphins last Sunday. It's a pretty close one. It's like, you know, 50 to nothing or whatever that score was. Hey, Stacker. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why every angel has a sword. Yeah, they, you know, they're not going to give any of them like an, an axe or a mace or a bow and arrow or anything else. Just if you're an angel, you get a sword. Maybe that's... That's in the rule somewhere. All right, cool. Thanks, Matthew. So I should probably get rid of one of the five drops, and I so I guess Hellkite. Yeah, I guess Hellkite. Because ah. swords are a thing of magic. Well, if this is mono blue, Tithaker is really good against mono blue. Making everything cost an extra mana. 
Like, I don't have to worry about Merfolk Trickster. It would it really would have been nice to draw a three mana spell here to play. Guess they could have flashed in the one drop though and blocked Tithe Taker. So now we have to be worried about Trickster. I don't know if this is like the best Legion's End play. Maybe it is. Because that... Cutthroat. Hmm. I don't like seeing that essence capture. My opponent may just... Okay, no, they did not. I was going to say, they may just play the Tempest Gin. We need to just draw spells. We're not going to be able to do very much if we don't draw spells. Well, Tithe Taker is good. <laughs> Tithe Taker doesn't win the game by itself. We're gonna have to have other spells. We haven't lost yet. Wow. Why would you possibly play that over Essence Capture? Because now I, I knew that their card was a, a counter spell like that. Now I can still try to play around Essence Capture. Could hold that in hand to bluff, but honestly, we, we really need it in play. We 
can still stay alive here if they have nothing else besides what, you know, besides just that dive down. We can still stay alive for a turn here. Depending on how they attack. That is. That's the best possible attack for us. If they would have just attacked with Tempest Gin and Cutthroat, we would lose. This attack gives us life still. Of course, obviously, they could just have something to stop me. And then we lose, but... Yeah, they, they really should not have attacked with Sailor. Letting me make this block with Resplendent Angel and keep Resplendent Angel alive could cost them. We still we still win this as long as they don't have removal. That was a really bad attack with the spectral sailor. Gave me a chance. And you can see why I played Lyra Dawnbringer into the counter spell before Resplendent Angel because Resplendent Angel can actually win games on its own. My opponent attacked there so they didn't sacrifice the Curious Obsession would be my guess. They have to make some attack to not sacrifice Curious Obsession. And then they just traded Cutthroat for a 4-4 four, four Flyer. Because the Cutthroat on the ground wasn't going to be able to block these creatures in the air. I don't even know if I play these. To counter magic, honestly. Yeah. So the reason why I did play them though is because of the Spectral Sailor. Otherwise they'd just be able to draw two cards. It's unfortunate that they had the two counter spells for For the the two counter spells for four mana like that, so they still got to draw one card. Still hanging on by a thread. That's all I'm hanging on by, though.
Really don't want to trade my Resplendent Angel away. It's too important of a card. Gosh, are you kidding me? Another dive down? I need I need two more mana for the double Resplendent Angel pump. This this is the turn that's going to cost me the game. Them having another another dive down and then being able to draw two cards with me having nothing to play to at least to at least uh, pressure their mana at all. I think that was the turn my opponent won this game. That was just a waste of a curious obsession. There's just no reason to play that card, that Curious Obsession. I have to block anyway. I'm taking I'm taking lethal. I have to block. And they just trade anyway. That was just a complete waste of a card there. I mean, they have the Spectral Sailor that's drawing millions of cards, so they can just waste a card, I guess. But that was a really bad enchantment. So my opponents made a couple... I mean, that one's not really that bad of a mistake, because they still have the Sailor out, but... We shouldn't have been in that game at all, but we were in it for a little ways. Okay, okay. Well, it gets better for us after sideboarding, of course. Get to have these duresses. This uncounterable Chandra. And some more Clarions. Cut, Dispark, Noxious Grasp. Those two cards are dead. Cut those right away. Um... The best thing Shalai does is protect a Resplendent Angel or a Lyra Dawnbringer that's already in play. Because Shalai doesn't... Both Shalai and Aurelia, neither one match up too well here in this matchup. Neither one blocks Tempest Gin. And so, neither one work, works too well for me. I think I'm going to trim Akalia. It also doesn't block Tempest Gin. And then one Shalai, one Aurelia. I know it's keeping a lot of fives, but the fives are all more useful. All a lot more useful. But still six fours and six fives. I guess I need to cut one more card. Oh, you're welcome, Denriel. So, yeah, I think, yeah, we could get rid of... Yeah, I, I like getting rid of a Doom Whisper. Yeah, I'm fine with that, because we should cut a 5-drop. And I and Hellkite and Dawnbringer are both going to be more valuable in this matchup. Um, so, we should probably cut one 5-drop, so we'll cut Doom Whisper. Yeah, Bone Crusher Giant would be pretty nice. Alright, all we have to do is draw lands. 
Gotta draw two lands. I, I like the Resplendent Angel Soren combination. I like our chances with those. We need to draw another white source to start with. Let's see, Isolated Chapel. It's not that. Yay. I think I get the other Tithe Taker down first. Now they, they won't be able to counter Resplendent Angel this next turn. Because again, they, they only have effective, one effective mana on my turn. Jeez. That is going to be really bad whenever they play Swamp Legion's End. Alright, keep on hitting land drops. We need two more land drops. Or well, Splendid Angel here. And they... Um, all the activated abilities cost the one more also, so like Spectral Sailor would cost 7 mana to activate on my turn. So it's not like they, since they can't counter stuff, they just draw something on my turn with the Spectral Sailor. Yeah, they're pretty done for there. Triple Tithe Taker. Too many tolls. Too many tolls to pay there. Oh yeah. I sure realize I might camera more that way than what I normally do because of the stream yesterday. Just realized that. There we go. That was a smothering tithe taker. Spell Pierce. <laughs> this matchup I've only played creatures so far in two games. Really hope no cutthroat. Please no cutthroat. Just give me a turn here. Uh, Alright, well... Wasn't spectacular for me, but I want to be able to double spell with duress, then tithe taker kind of thing. I guess that punishes me for doing this.
So obviously I want Sarah for the scales to resolve. Okay, opt bottom, opt bottom. Good. Resolve. Ugh. Found it the very last card. All right, so I, I guess if I would not have traded with the Tithe Taker that turn, we would have been able to resolve that. Okay. We're still in there. I'm just going to trade my 1-1 one, one for their Spectral Sailor. Keep them from drawing cards. I think that's a pretty good trade. They're obviously pretty desperate for more cards, so... Chandra. Let's start at a sizzle and see if we make it. Let's make some more room to fight in. There we go. GGs. GGs. All right, Kalia and friends. Four and O. Oh. Yep, I'm going for Iowa over Iowa State today. Hopefully my Hawkeyes pull it out. To, it's going to be a really good game. Don't let me know the score. I have it recording right now. I'll watch it after the stream tonight. That's right. Let's go, Hawks. All right, we're 4-0. and oh. Sir Tail saying, love the content, keep up the great work. Oh, and hello to Hawkeye. You can see him. Oh, uh, you can't quite see him. He's back there on the couch. He, there he is. He's back there. Him right there. Poke. See him petting Hawkeye. Right now. Everything, everything will be all right, all right. Yeah, this isn't the bestest of hands. Basic Planes and Bedevil are a match made in uh, wherever Bedevil's from. <laughs> Sorry, Choco. I think, yeah, you're going to need a lot of prayers for Syracuse to be Clemson. Clemson looks unbeatable. Well, thanks, Sir Tails. Uh, Sloth says, I originally saw this deck as just some Mardu pile with some cool synergies and stuff, but dang, this this is impressive. Well, thanks. Yeah, we've we've done well with this deck basically every time we've played it. It, uh, it ends... Ends up working pretty well. I think this... So, like, we're playing against, like, Sultai Field of the Dead. I think this is, like, a matchup or, like, you know, the five-color whatever. This is the kind of matchup that I don't love. 
but we can still fly over a bunch of zombies. And if we get like Resplendent Angel, Lyra Dawnbringer, like that kind of stuff going, like we, we have some really powerful things for this matchup also. Um, I like having, uh, I like this deck against uh, different uh, aggro decks. As you see, as you've seen, like how we've been playing throughout this league, like we've been um, playing against a whole lot of different aggro decks and everything. And so, I like it there, and and we also did really well against Esper. But Soren, our Planeswalkers were a big part of that. Soren and ooh, Soren and Gideon. Um, I'm not sure about after rotation because this deck, like, it's losing a lot. Like, Resplendent Angel, as you can tell, that's been a really big part of our deck. We're losing Resplendent Angel, we're losing Shalai, we're losing Lyra. Those three cards are huge. As far as what to play here, I kind of want to play Shalai, but I also want to play Kalia and look for Lyra also. So kind of a tough call here. I don't really know which one of those two to go with. Do I have to be worried about like time wipe? Are they gonna like time wipe me? No, I hope not. Let's look for Lyra. Yeah, just a Seraph. We did get a bunch of Blood Suns in our sideboard for this matchup too, though. I don't think our opponent's playing Scape Shift. This, most of these Field of Dead decks are not playing Scape Shift anymore. Like, the only ones that do are, like, just the straight-up Bant version that is just a combo deck. That that one uses Time Light for sure. But usually the, the five-color versions, I, I haven't really seen Scape Shift in five-color versions. Yeah, like, they're going to be goalessing and stuff. Ah, they did have time wipe. That's kind of rough. That's pretty rough. Yeah, we haven't seen any good Kalia targets in the new set yet, have we? Wow, they just didn't play... anything, really. What's up, Pi? Thanks for the that sub there. I appreciate that. Our eighth sub of the day. Gross. Trust me. You'll thank me later. So I guess I'm just gonna go Hellkite Haste now. Don't worry. Thought about doing that last turn. Should I even take out the Teferi? Maybe I don't actually need to take out Teferi. Shuffling up all those spells that they put down to the bottom. They're at 14. Like maybe I just go like Seraph and Tithe Taker here. Um, it doesn't really seem like Teferi is too important that I immediately need to like get rid of it. No, I am not making this up as I go. Where I can just kind of double spell.
just let me know if you're up for round two? Crisis obviously is a huge problem. More likely, or they're likely to have more crises. They're they're down to just thirty six cards over there. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't really think that we're going to be winning this game. Because yeah, they get a whole another turn here. They have all this mana. You know, just a a Golos or a Krasis. You know, like, we're not winning this game. It was pretty surprising to not see a Field of the Dead by then, especially after that Drawn with Dreams. Yeah, they just got a bunch of Nexuses. No, there's no escape shifts in my opponent's deck. Alright, so we're going to have to win games 2 and 3 with the Blood Suns. go. GG. They have... Are they just not playing Field of the Dead? <clears throat> I guess they only had two... That's the only their second red, so they want to be able to have double goalless activation. So that, that was their second red source. I was checking black first, and I saw they had two black. I hadn't... They had three black, actually, but yeah. Yes, Nexus can be countered, yes. Well, that's game. Just double Drawn from Dreams for free. I don't really see us taking another turn. They get to look at 14 cards. Like, how are they not going to find Nexus? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like most of their library. Oh, I didn't know the rope sound was going. I'm sorry. Yeah, y'all you'll have to you'll have to really tell me that the rope sound's going, especially between like between matches, so I know to restart the client between matches. They're just gonna take the rest of the turns. We're not getting another turn. Yeah, I know. I know it's during the sideboarding. That's that's where it happens and everything. But I can't hear it on my end, so y'all just have to tell me. So yeah, this is a this is a tough one, honestly, for us to win. This is this one's a, a tough matchup for us. This is like the matchup I want to see the least. Chandra. Because, yeah, Golos is a difficult one. And then the, the time wipes, you know, kill my creatures and everything. Um, I don't know if I actually want Clarion. I'm not sure if I want Clarion or not. I'm not sure if I want Tithe Taker. 
probably don't want Tithe Taker, but it's just so many threes. Oh no! Are you kidding me? I was just clicking on the last thing, so I, I realized that I, I do want cast down because of Krasis. And so I was putting the, the cast downs in there because of Krasis. And I was just cutting like my last card. I was going to cut the last embodiment also. And then hit submit. And it went away. Ugh. Just click on my last card. Well, we're gonna have to try to win a game without Blood Sun now. That's with our main deck. This is gonna be really tough. Without you know Blood Sun, Gideon, Duress, all that kind of stuff. Really, don't give you that much time to sideboard. Someone like me that just plays all these different decks every single day. I have to think about, okay, what's all the stuff that I, I have in my deck? What's all the stuff they have in their deck? How How's this all going to work? And then, of course, I always like take a, just a breather after the game and, and talk and everything. Yeah, yeah, you have more time in tournaments. Hmm. I'm gonna go Seraph so I can just follow up with Seraph here next, and also Seraph is good against Time Wipe. Or this, the Resplendent Angel isn't so much. That's really unfortunate. I already thought that this was going to be a tough matchup for us. But not getting to sideboard. We're really up against it. Let's see if we can do enough damage in the air here. Yeah, so I know that the bug's happening now, but I mean, this is our last match. I mean, do you all want me to F4 and, and close out and re-enter? Yeah, best best time for the heads up is you know, right at the end of a match. You know, this this is our last match with this deck anyway, because you know this is our fifth match. But right at the end of the match, y'all let me know before I join a new one. So like, you know, whenever the match is ending, and that's the the best time, because then because even like you know during during this, I'll probably forget about it while just playing through the whole. Like a long, like if we play a long game two and game three and stuff, I you know I may forget about it then. Yeah, it's it is barely noticeable, but 
Um, it's more noticeable on YouTube because there's no music or anything, so it's more noticeable on YouTube. So I, I do want to always um, start matches over or close out and re-enter. I know my responsibility. Trust me, I have a plan. Darn. I was hoping to find... I don't think I bedevil that thing. I was hoping to find Resplendent Angel and would just be able to play Resplendent Angel also. But honest, maybe that's fine because... Maybe that's good because of Time Wipe anyway. be a bad idea so we'll see how many extra turns they get hopefully just the one because another one would mean then they would get to use their teferi as a bounce spell I, I do have the seven power in the air right now But yeah, this this should be a different card. I'd try to sideboard this card out. Would have been a lot more convenient as another card. So I'm guessing that means Time Wipe. They don't want to attack with the Rejuvenator because they want to return Rejuvenator back to hand. That should be a different card also. That didn't go according to plan. And then that one you know, the one little life gain they just gained that last turn. Finding that land with the Rejuvenator, that's... That could be the difference. I'm at six now instead of five. I could also just draw Lyra Dawnbringer. I think I only have one. I put one Lyra to the bottom, though, with a Kalia, so there's only one left. It's not a very good shot that I draw it. Oh, just more time wipes. This is a tough matchup for us. Without sideboarding. Okay. Hmm. 
So really consider playing Tithe Taker, because if I play Tithe Taker, they don't know that I have lethal the next turn. Like, I could have surprise lethal with the Aurelia pumping the embodiment. Oh, well, this is lethal for my opponent now, though. Right? Yeah. Rejuvenator's lethal. That is also. GG's. Yeah, we don't we don't get a next turn. Alright, so we went four one. I um I did not put myself in a very good position to win that last one by not sideboarding. So that was a mistake. Um, but yeah, that's as far as like our, our matchups go, I think that's that's the one that I want to play the least because of the combination of um, like Golos is really hard to stop unless you have like the instant speed to spark because you know you can just be ahead and if you're tapped out they can just play Golos and you know at, at like the very late game with just tons of lands like we saw at the game one just play Golos and, and activate a bunch but Honestly, like we have the flyers that can can sometimes finish it out. It's just the time wipe, like the combination of time wipe with, um, and then like that that combo finish of Golos ne and Nexus. Yeah, you know, like basically Nexus of Fate and uh, time wipe. Those are cards I don't interact with too well. I really wish we could have played it after sideboarding though, because I do have some really good things. Like Duress is amazing. You know, like take you know Duress, take one of those time wipes. That's that can just be the difference in the games there. You know, having a Blood Sun in place, they don't get the zombies all the time. And that like these could have just been the difference in the games, but um, yeah, I I messed up by not sideboarding. That's uh, I took too long there. But anyway, still a really good showing um, for the for the Akalia and friends deck. You know, nothing wrong with four and one in ranked. We're gonna take that uh, take that record every single time. Um, but I need to play tighter to try to get that five zero. Still, this is a really cool deck. Still like uh, like it a bunch. We'll play it some more still before rotation. Um, yeah, impressive showing. All right, so if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And if so, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. But uh, thank you so much for watching, Kalia and friends, and I'll see you for the next video.